Hi, I'm, I'm Roy Baldridge. I'm currently second chief of the Shawnee tribe. I've been on, I was appointed to the Shawnee Council back in 2001. You want to introduce yourself, Chief? Well, my name is Ron Sparkman. I've been involved in the Shawnee tribal government, I'd like to say, since day one. At the time, we were working with Wilma Mankiller, who was the chief of the Cherokees, and Wilma helped us out a great deal, and she got us some of the money through Cherokee Nation, and working through Cherokee Nation, we got the Council of Cherokee Nation to agree that we could leave Cherokee Nation and we could take nothing with us. And after a lot, lot, lots of effort, and with lots and lots of friends, we finally got the bill passed by President Clinton and Congress the last few days of his administration. And I want to say right now, everything we got at that time was done through friendships. No money was spent on our part. And I, I just couldn't believe how lucky we were because Tribes all across the United States were spending millions of dollars to get federally recognized and without any success, and we'd done it strictly through friendships. Yes, like, like Chief uh, Sparkman had mentioned, you know, when we separated from Cherokee Nation, I think the first few meetings was there at the little community building at White Oak, and uh, then we moved to Big Cabin, and, uh, Previous council had purchased that building there at Big Cabin, at the town of Big Cabin, and we met there for about a year, wasn't it? Something like year, that. two years, and then Chief Sparkman was able to, due to his relationship up here in Miami, Oklahoma, was able to. Uh, we were able to move our offices up here. At first, we started out at the. ITC building. Right, that's our They gave us a space in there before we built our current building over there. Well, when we became federally recognized, we agreed to leave Cherokee Nation. We agreed to leave Cherokee Na Nation with nothing. And so I approached the eight tribes up here and was welcomed with open arms. They gave us a home and a place to have, establish an office. And again, uh, our, most of our tribal members are not aware of that. How did that happen? They gave us that spot where our present office building is built there in the complex. At the time, it was a swamp. There were, and I had an idea, and I got with the Soil Conservation Service about a pond. And we dug all that out and made a lake out there and then design the buildings that are presently built. I'm very, very proud of that. And there's been several accomplishments that we've made. Uh, first and foremost, I think our number one is the naturally the, the casino at Gaiman. And again, that is a long, long story and I'd like to elaborate on that sometime in detail. And again, we got that through friendships. I cannot say enough about Governor Anatubby and the Chickasaw Nation, how Governor Anatubby and I sat down in Remington Park one day, he and I, just the two of us, and sat down with a plan to have the Shawnee Tribe and the Chickasaw Nation work together on that project. And I want every tribal member to know that we are greatly indebted to the Chickasaw Nation. And please don't ever forget that. They are our friend and we would not be here today without them. I think throughout our history, the Shawnee tribe, they've always built those friendships. During Chief Sparkman's tenure, uh, I, over for a good number of years, he was the chairman for intertribal. And uh, currently today, uh, Chief Barnes is, uh, he's chairman of the United Indian Tribes of Oklahoma as of a couple months ago. 
So we're still building those relationships, maintaining those friendships. And, uh, you know, I think for a tribe our side, it's essential. You know, you have to have friends to grow. I think back when we were federally recognized, the Bureau of Indian Affairs asked us to make up a base role. Included in the legislation that Congress passed, it done away with all the different names and everything of the United Shawnees, which was an organization in Kansas. It done away with the name Loyal Shawnees, and we became the Shawnee tribe, period. That's it. And I'm very proud of that name. And I would like our people to know at that time as we got this role together, we accepted Shawnee people that were not allowed to be on the role of Cherokee Nation because their ancestors did not sign up for the Dawes role. All right, those people, their name was on what they call a Wallace Roll. That Wallace Roll was not recognized by Cherokee Nation, and also the Cherokees did not recognize what is also known as the Miller Roll that had a lot of Cherokee people on it that never did get, a, get tribal membership. But as we completed this role, we tried to contact, and I think we've done an excellent job of it, contact everyone that we thought would be eligible for membership on the Shawnee, for the Shawnee tribe. And after many months of work, we finally had a role that we submitted to the Bureau of Indian Affairs that claimed roughly a thousand names on it. I'm very proud of the way that we have progressed, my family, other tribal members, and I just want all those people to know, get that base roll out and you look at it and you'll find out those are the people that are very, very proud of their Shawnee heritage because they came forward and signed up with zero benefits, I'll assure you, but they wanted on that because they were Shawnees. I'm going to tell you kind of a personal story of Roy sitting here. Roy's dad came to me one time and he asked me, he said, Ron, I want our family to be a member of the Shawnee tribe, you know. And I said, well, great, sign up. And he, he, and he was very appreciative of the fact that we accept all Shawnee people. And uh, I don't care Wallace Road people, I don't care where you are, if you're if you've got Shawnee heritage, this is your tribe. You know, it doesn't belong to anyone, doesn't belong to me or anyone else, but together we make a great, great tribe. You know, lately, and, and I, I don't know, I look back now, you know, I think of, uh, you know, whenever uh, we, <laughs> we were meeting at White Oak, and I look about, I think about the people that were on the council then that are no longer with us. You know, like Georgie, Shirley, uh, uh, I think it was one of the Doherty's, Tommy Bufink, you know, yeah, I think about that a lot. T. High second died. T. High second died. You know, I, 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 see, I, I, I see Jackie ever so often. I saw her a couple weeks ago. Let me tell you one story about that. He mentioned Georgie, who was our, again, every tribal member, I want them to know this. Uh -huh. Georgie was our tribal treasurer. Mm -hmm. We had practically zero dollars. <laughs> yeah. And Georgie, as our treasurer, one time to pay our bills, she and Bill, her husband, took $800 out of their personal account and put in the Shawnee tribe name so we could pay our bills. Now that's where we started. And now you see all the funds and things that we have those all 4,000 tribal members need to know that our ancestors or Georgia, that's how we started. They put money out of their back pocket in there. And Don Greenfeather and I, we, I don't know how many times we put money out of our pocket in to, to keep the tribe going. And so 
even though today we're basically financially secure, well, they need to know where we, how we got there. And uh, guys, as I said here today, I'm proud of the fact that we were able to do that and to think what happened and how it happened and, and never forget it, okay? Our ancestors traveled. 26 different states have the Shawnee footprint on as were villages. And, um, and so we continue. Chief Sparkman started it with the return to Kansas. And we're still working on that today. And, uh, you know, we're working right now to preserve Shawnee Mission to ensure that you know, our ancestors there, those that died there, those that live there, that they're always remembered. You know, Kansas was our last reservation. So we keep that in mind and we continue to work, you know, to follow Chief Sparkman's efforts in Kansas today. You know, we've never forgotten that. And we want to expand. I mean, we're working on, we've expanded our programs. How many staff did we start when we were at ITC what we had uh, three 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 and now we're, we're we're over 50 you know we've with programs we've added burials uh, education you know uh, uh, Indian child welfare you know a lot of these areas we're, we're, we're wanting to build sustainable programs that will last generations after we're gone and but None of that would have happened without Chief Sparkman's work, you know, and, and we recognize that every day. I want everyone to know that we are a very, very, very proud people. And what we try to do is, is do the right thing, not only for our people, but yes, in this country we've got laws, rules, and regulations, and we follow them. And and I want them to know we're a very proud people and we're going to be around a long time because we need to teach our young people to, of this pride and for them to be very, very proud that they are Shawnees and to carry forth that, that idea.